everyone. We're your hosts, Chelsea and Robin. And And this this is Don't Mind Mind If We Do. Finally, a relatable podcast for women where we can talk about whatever we want. Don't mind if we do. Welcome back to Don't Mind If We Do, and we are here with the same two of us. We've got Robin and we've got me. <laughs> the same two of us the are back again? I can't believe it. Just in case you were expecting someone else, it's still us. <laughs> we got to get it together over here. We do. Okay. And that's what this episode basically oh, is about. But before we start, we have to have a drink to calm our nerves because I know how nervous you get, Robin, with uh, talking on air. It's just not your thing, so... We're going to sample. Good Listen thing. to this. Let's see. Oh, good one. Was that good? What is it today? Yeah, today Salt we are sampling Salt Spring Wild. And this flavor, I feel like it's new because I've been to their uh, cidery, winery, cidery, 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 cider, cider, cider place. <laughs> I've been to place Salt the, Spring. The cider place. Yes, and good. I've had their uh, cider flights and I don't feel like I've tried bitter orange rosemary. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. And this place is the cutest place. There's picnic tables outside. They've got all sorts of different uh, snacky foods and all different kinds of uh, cider. My favorite salt spring cider is the plum. Oh, it's my favorite, okay. but they didn't have it. So I got this. This is a bitter orange. I'm fill my glass more than yours, as usual. Okay. As Cheers. usual, I will smell as it As usual, first. you'll smell it, and then you'll leave Cheers. it on the table. Cheers. Let's see. Okay. Mm. It smells strong. Oh, I love Oh, that's good. So good. It's got like a, and it's got that yeah. bitter, bitter orange. Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, bitter orange rosemary. That Ooh. actually has a great flavor. It is tangy. Oh, Robin's drinking like more that. today. I like that mm-hmm. a lot. Oh, that's mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. Okay, this would be that's nice with like a, a nice seafood salad or like some nice sort with of anything. A, I don't know. Yeah, really. I mean, yeah. just get straight. <laughs> It'd okay, be nice with your fine. coffee that you're drinking. That's that's fine. Yeah, that's delicious, Kate. So we'll have to do an episode one day on Salt Spring at this cider. And try delicious. the flight. That's okay, really I like good. that. I like that a lot. Delicious. I don't okay. know about you, but I often feel like my day is regimented. So it's it's like one thing to the next thing, and sometimes there's barely time to breathe. I feel like a lot of people, it's like yeah. that for them, right? And I I don't even have kids. Like I, right. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how you do it. I don't have that though. <laughs> I make what? Sure that I don't. What have I been doing wrong? No, I make sure to not have that. My okay. sister, she has four kids. Yeah. And when school's in and they all have their after school things and she's got all her things to do, her day usually stresses me out just by listening to it. Mm-hmm. I make really sure not to have that. <laughs> so that's why lots of things don't get done on my end because I don't like stressful days. I don't like them being one thing to the next. And so I usually just end up doing nothing. <laughs> That sounds productive as well. Okay. I don't know. (laughs) Sounds really relaxing though. How do you manage things though when you're feeling overwhelmed? Like what do you, what do you do? Um, I just, I work best under pressure. Okay. So So I do 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 like crunch time. Do you procrastinate though? Right till the end. Yeah, right till the end. And then it's crunch time, you're up all night, you're getting things done and then they're done. And then you didn't have a stressful week. You only had one stressful night. So that's how I roll. I get to start taking yeah. a page from the Chelsea Smith book. Okay, <laughs> yeah. that's it. Follow me for more tips on how to not be stressed. <laughs> Just don't do it. Just be stressed all night for like one night <laughs> for overnight. one night versus right? a week. That, that makes sounds sense. way better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for your comments on the Facebook page. Brenda says, I always handwrite my to-do lists. Mm-hmm. Being physically able to see them makes it more tangible, which totally. I would agree with. And right? handwriting it out makes you memorize it more also. That's a good which point. Which means you don't usually need the list after. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Charlene, she says, one thing that helps when my list is super long is to create a deadline. I invite people over if my house is a mess. Good. Me too. I tell my, (laughs) I tell my client I will have the project done in two days, et cetera. And then I work faster and don't want to let the other people down by falling short. It's easier to prioritize when you have a timeline that isn't just your own. And that's kind of what you're saying. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that You have a deadline. Like if I have a client coming in the morning that you have to be ready I just don't prepare a week before. I that prepare makes the night before. Anna says, I find that starting the laundry, the dishwasher, and the Roomba help to motivate okay, me. Yes. It's as if my coworkers are all busy and now it's my turn And you too. feel bad sitting and watching them work. <laughs> a Roomba would be amazing. I know. Shoot. Give me that Shoot. for my birthday. Uh, can I? Can you get me one for mine okay. since we're like birthday That's twins? That's true. We'll just share one. Can we share one? We can we'll share. I think it. we can. I think we can. Yeah. Done. Okay, good. Perfect. Your birthday present is done. 
Uh, Rachel says, I always make my bed. Hmm. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard this too, yeah. right? You should always make your bed, even if yeah, it's it like the, the day. Even, or, and even if it's the last thing you do before you go to bed at night, if you just make the bed, at least you did one thing, before right? Before you get into it and mess yeah. it up. Yeah. It just never makes sense to me, but anyways, <laughs> even on days when I don't accomplish much, much else, if anything, I know that one task was complete, so the day isn't wasted. That's what Rachel said. Exactly. That's what she said. <laughs> Okay, that didn't make sense, but that's okay. No, it works. It I'm, works. I'm fine with it. Whatever. We have salt spring cider and it's delicious. That's right. Mm. Oh, and we have a guest too. Mm. We have sampled salt spring cider before. Oh. Yes. Have we? Good. For our video that I did on how to take selfies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, we drank that whole bottle. I did. Now I'm remembering because it's delicious again. Congratulations Good. to you. Salt Spring made it twice onto the Polar Podcast. Sponsor us. <laughs> if you want to sponsor this episode. <laughs> so hot in here. Okay. okay. So today's episode um, is all about productivity and how to simplify your life. And uh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm too busy drinking. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Please welcome to Don't Mind If We Do, the incredible Lisa Zarotny. She's a productivity coach and the host of the Positively Living podcast. Thanks for being here, Lisa, because as you can see, we can barely keep it together over here on this podcast. <laughs> It's my pleasure. And guess what? We're all dealing with the same stuff. And anybody who tells you differently is trying to sell you something. Lisa, how did we even get here, though? How are we this society of, you know, overproducers, overachievers, and yet we feel out of the out of control? Like we're at the point where we can't even focus on what we're doing because we have so many things, so much input coming in all the time. Seriously, thank you for asking that because that is what I'm, I'm walking around with my soapbox. Like you got a minute. Can we talk about this? And I love calling myself a productivity coach and then being like, it's not what you think it is. Stop. Just take a moment and breathe yeah. uh, because then people are like, wait, no, I thought we were going to talk about the Pomodoro technique. I'm like, no, not even. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's we are a culture of loving this idea of being busy and putting value to this concept of being productive. That's the only thing I can come up with as kind of a, you know, in an absolute huge nutshell, right? I love being that, busy. That we value. I'm very rarely productive. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that for Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. I would say I'm both. I'm busy and, but I also feel overwhelmed by many things, right? So I'm busy and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm getting things done and whatever. And then I'm like, okay, what did I forget to do? Right. We're, we're almost like, I, mean, I feel like I'm never doing everything a hundred percent well. Yeah. And that's like a really great observation is that we can be busy and that's the distinction of busy versus productive, right? So the busy is, you know, we're active and we're doing things, but what are we really achieving? So that's why my mantra is to do less and live more. That's right? my mantra too. It, we're always talking tell. about doing more, right? Right? Yeah. If you saw my house, you <laughs> would know else? that that's, that's my mantra. Chelsea just sure. stole your mantra. Okay. <laughs> just so you know, in Canada, we now have that mantra too. <laughs> Yes, yes. Listen, slap the flag on it. It's not a problem. Take it, please. Because we need to start embracing this idea of living our lives so that we're not like, I mean, I don't know, at the end of it going, what just happened? Yeah. You know, who, who's who's ever said, put on my epitaph, I wish I'd done more. Right. You know, like. What's an epitaph? No. <laughs> <laughs> don't get Chelsea to do your epitaph, okay? Don't do don't get Chelsea Wait, to do it. Is that like an epilogue? You you had a you had a chance to say what's a motto, and I could have said what's a motto you, but uh, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Next time. Now you got to look up epitaph in Google. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll look so it what, up. what what do we want people to say? What's our legacy, right? What do we want people to say about us? And it's not like, oh, I didn't do enough or I wish I'd cleaned more or whatever. No. That probably will be mine. It's about living. It is Robin, about Robin will say when I die, I really wish she cleaned more. Yeah, I wish she had had a cleaner home. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. Yeah. Now, see, that's different. That's what Robin would say. <laughs> yeah, and my my uh, writing on your epitaph is going to be yeah. really uh, different than what yeah. you had hoped for. So for just sure. so you know. I am expecting it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Tell us, though, what, uh, is it mostly women that you're seeing doing this? Is it mostly women, that, is it somehow ingrained in us more so than men? Or is it both sexes that you see? Yeah, I, I wonder about that. I don't know if I have 
a precise answer, but I would say that I tend to work with women more because a big part of it is that I think we tend to take on more of that multitasking right. tendency, right? And we, I, as a society, whether you have kids or not, you find yourself in this position of saying, I will take care of these people and I will take care of these tasks and I will take on that list. And then on top of that, if you are, you know, passionate about creating and doing, which are my people, my people are the multi-passionates, the creatives, right? The things that, the, the ones who love all the things, but hashtag all the things is not a good to-do hashtag list, all right? all the things. Nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just ask me how I know. Uh, and so given that, I think there's probably more of a tendency. It's, I can't say for sure. I am talking to more men about this because I would like to know, but I don't think there's this, hey, how do you balance life and family and all of the things? I, I don't see people asking men that as much as they do women. So True. women are probably more uh, the ones whom I'm ready to support. And I get it, you know, because I live it. That makes sense. What What would you say though? I mean, say I come to you and I'm like, Lisa, I need help. I don't know how to organize myself or I've got too many things on my plate. What do you do as a productivity coach? What happens when I come to see you? First of all, I say, hi, I'm so happy you're here. It's all good. You're doing a great job. Just Thanks. so you know. I think, I think, think I'm actually, a hot mess, I'm but doing it's a great not. job too. I think I am doing I'll a great job. I'll pat her on the back Thanks, for you. Honey. Thanks, Lisa. Good yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Please. Good. Yeah, pat her on the back for me. Uh, yeah, that's one of the first things I do. And then we make sure that, you know, uh, we're, our our vibe works with each other, right? Because it's so important when you're working with a coach that you you feel comfortable and, and there's a trust involved. Because honestly, when I start digging into things with you, your life, there's a lot of trust involved and I honor that. So we have to make sure that's cool. And if it is, then we start talking about personality types and tendencies and, and stuff that you're like, wait, wait, I thought we were going to talk about, you know, which calendar to use and what my planner is. And I'm like, we'll get there. But first things first, I need to know about you. What are you passionate about? What are your values? We talk about core values and things like that. Those are all the things that come back around and create what I call the filters in our life, what we let in and what we don't, or what we double check. Because if we're letting things in that don't align with our values and don't feel right to us, there's the overwhelm, there's the frustration, there's the, I'm not going to do that. I have it on my list. I keep thinking I have to do it. I should do it. There's a word. Right. Should. And right. So and this is how we work together. So we we discover who you are, what you want to be achieving, where you feel like there's an imbalance. And we start to break it down by understanding foundationally how you work best and what you want to do and figuring out those filters so we can then say, all right, what belongs and what doesn't. And now when you figure out what belongs, what are the things you want to do, how are you going to do them best? Because some people, I mean, case in point, you're looking at different kinds of systems, uh, maybe like a project management system. And some people are like, oh Trello is God, the best so thing we ever. Hate it. Is it? We hate Trello. And some, it's the worst. <laughs> thank you for proving oh my, my point, right? So, yeah. So I'm not going to come to you and be like, you have to use Trello. I'm going to be like, what's going on? What do you like? What don't you like? What do you look at? And you go completely cross-eyed. Whereas you look at something else and you go, that's my brain. That makes total sense. That's how we work. It's discovering those things because so many times people come from this, get more done, be productive, all the things with this idea of, well, we're going to try to use this specific technique, this specific product, you know, and you can't start there. You need to start deeper. But the other thing that's going to happen too is we may talk about your frustrations with family and, and how they're maybe not supporting you or that you're scared of something. You know, I mean, we, we talk as women about mindset and then it sounds kind of like, what is that? And it sounds very wooey, right? But there is something to that because so much of we what we go through in life informs the decisions that we make again and again. I mean, you think about it in the relationships that you build and in the choices that you make every single day and then go, why did I make that choice? So it's there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack I and feel then like Robin rebuild. would talk about her co-host and I how her co-host's messiness affects her life, I think. I don't know. There's just there's just a <laughs> yeah, lot in like here. An intervention. Intervention. There's a lot in here. 
You can't see it, but if I were to turn this laptop around, you'd be like, oh. oh. my God, this is the most empty room in the house. Okay. What are you even talking about? Um, oh, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. decluttering is a big thing, right? And that's, I mean, to in order to declutter, say, a yeah. room, perhaps <laughs> there are other things that we need to declutter first. Is that what I'm hearing, Lisa? I feel like that's what I'm hearing. Oh, my goodness. It could be, yes. Now, decluttering a room is a great example. I started as a professional organizer because we can look at physical clutter and we can say, okay, yeah, this is in our way, way, right? This is, you know... And that's the thing, too. It's only clutter if it gets in between you and the life you want to be living. That's a real I hope you're taking notes, Chelsea. I want there. Chelsea to be so, taking notes during oh, this Oh, I have extra paper on mine. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> what taking? Sorry, Lisa, continue. If you had seen my house, Robin, last year, it's been no worries. Like 99% uh, decluttered. Has it? Yeah, my sister came, and for six months, we've decluttered this house. It's crazy. Stop shaking Lisa, your head. Lisa, can you see me shaking my head? Stop okay, shaking your head. Shaking my head. I can, so. I can. Yeah, yeah, Robin's shaking your head, and Chelsea's like, this is not clutter. I so not clutter, I got to be honest. If someone says to me, this is not I clutter. I say it wasn't. Okay, I we didn't good. say I'm it like, wasn't right, clutter. I said it wasn't <laughs> in my way, is what I said. There's lots of stuff, but uh-huh. it's, it's moved to the side. Like no one's I tripping. think again, you're not tripping up. Chelsea's that. a great example, though, Lisa, of what we're talking about, where she's a busy mom, she has a busy life, she's got a great career. Other things take precedence over maybe keeping things neat and tidy, right? So this is True. one place in your life where something has to give. Right. And sometimes what has to give is this notion that it has to be pristine. Someone else to come and clean it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Or you, you know, that is another thing too. If it matters to you and you know that it would up level your life to handle it, you know, and that's what I'm saying about identifying what really is clutter. If it's really getting in your way and sometimes for a while it isn't, sometimes it totally is. You you have to figure that out. And then you're absolutely right. One way you can deal with it is by delegating, by getting help, you know, by fast tracking it with a coach. Absolutely. And that's a great example of what I do. But this idea of clutter, you you need to identify, is it getting in your way? And um, back to your point, Robin, that this external clutter, it both affects and reflects what's going on internally. And that doesn't mean like it's a bad thing or you're doing something wrong. It can mean that you are juggling many, many other things. And if those are priorities, if those matter to you, if they are a part of who you are as a person, then so mm-hmm. be it. We do have limits. Hi, we're human. And that's okay. Uh, so it's it's a matter of making those choices as you go one step at a time and making sure that what you're doing and how you're extended yeah, is prioritized point. correctly. Doing and, stuff and that makes not. sense useful or purposeful. It's a waste of time. Would you recommend that then, Lisa, in terms of if people are feeling overwhelmed is one of the the best things that you can do, maybe start to prioritize a few things like put down on a piece of paper, like, you know, these are my top three things. Everything else sort of gets funneled away for like another time. But then when when do you add those other things back in so that eventually you can get all the things done that you really want to do? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, The first thing that I I love to do in terms of feeling overwhelmed and stressed, there's two things that can be going on. One, of course, is like the mental of what's happening and the other could potentially be the physical, right? So with the physical, these are... These are the points of self-care that we love to say, oh, yeah, we'll get to it, but then we don't. And what's brilliant about self-care is it's not just pampering. It's about filling up your cup. It's about creating energy because energy management, people talk about time management. I'm like, no, the time is there. We all have it. We all have the same amount of it. It's how we manage our energy to attack it. It's how we manage our priorities in terms of what we're going to attack first. It's how we manage ourselves. And self-care is going to boost up that energy, right? So given that, you can take a moment to, oh God, (laughs) nap. Napping is my favorite. (laughs) I love napping. Uh, And I mean 10 minutes, or I mean, even if you're like, I can only spare five. If you really feel that strapped and you just lie down and calmly breathe for five minutes, and I'm not talking about scrolling on your phone, uh, taking a deep breath. Let's do that right now. Just inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Ready? Inhale. (laughs) Exhale through your mouth. Chelsea's breathing on me. I'm going. Yeah, I exhaled into Robin's mouth. Shake it out. (laughs) 
Okay, see, that's not it's relaxing. It's 100 degrees in here. It's a lot over here, Lisa. Okay? Fair enough. So, all right. So maybe not in. as much exhaling. Inhale but- and hold it. <laughs> but, you know... Another great one, and you guys bring this to everyone, is is laughing. So those are some things that you can do from the physical stress side. But to the point about, okay, we're overwhelmed, we have so many things to do, I highly recommend doing a, a brain, like a mind sweep, a brain dump, whatever you want to call it. David Allen, uh, who has the system Getting Things Done. I do take some ideas from him uh, that are absolutely key, and one of them is get it out of your head. Don't try to hold it in your head. Remembering all that stuff. That's so much stress. That's so much, I'm going to forget it. And then it takes you out of the moment. You can't be as mindful and present and, you know, as accurate in what you're doing if you're trying to remember other things. So a five minute brain dump, and I even have a, uh, a worksheet for free on my website called the, I call the focus file because I'm obsessed with alliteration. And uh, it's really just to let you focus. You take five minutes to take everything that's getting your attention out of your brain and down on paper. Now, that is the first step. That is not your to-do list. It is your to-choose list. <laughs> So getting back to the point that you said about, okay, now we're prioritizing and we're setting the other stuff aside. I would say even first, this is where the decluttering comes in. Now you're decluttering on a to-do list, not just decluttering your closet, right? You're saying, okay, these are all the things that I have in my brain that I have to do. Do I really? Uh, Do they really belong? Did I think they did? Did I think it two months ago yeah. and it's still on my list and it's kids going and going? Or or maybe now I'm like, what was I thinking? It's like the shirt in the closet with the tag still on it that I thought was awesome when I bought it. Anyone? Anyone? Just me? Okay. No, no, I have lots. Yeah, yeah everyone. Lots. Everyone. Full, full yeah. closet. Right. Every, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. all of us. Yeah. Uh, so same <laughs> idea with those to-do list items. So you can get rid of some, truly, you can let go of them, but some of them may be, okay, Okay, that's a not right now. You love all the things, but it doesn't make sense right now. It can not make sense right now because you're not ready for it. It cannot make sense right now because you don't have the bandwidth for it. You need to know what your own limits are. The same thing in uh, professional organizing. I talk about limits like you have a closet, a certain size that will hold a certain number of things. <laughs> well, that's the same thing for you as a you person. Also, you also with your have energy. floor space though, and then chairs that are in the room <laughs> as well that and hold clothes. And you have and you have Dressers. other people's closets, yes. and you also yeah. hallways yeah. and bedrooms. If like you could see plenty. this place, Lisa, you would know what she's talking about. <laughs> so you are throwing me under the bus, I sure today, and I'm got run over. She's not, She's here. She's here to help me. I'm actually <laughs> talking to you under the bus right now. Hi, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you need a beverage? Uh, I have one. Always. <laughs> Thanks. But you know what, though? Chelsea's been brain dumping while you were talking. I, I don't know. Yes, I just saw I'm you brain dumping. I'm writing so, notes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Notes. Yeah, good. They're right. for you for later. Oh, oh no. <laughs> 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 oh, I take I take notes all the time when I'm uh, when I'm with a, a guest on my podcast because I want to take it and immediately make a note for later so that I can stay in the moment and have the conversation. So I, I love the note taking. No, this is but awesome. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah, the idea of getting it out of your head, realizing that it's not a to do list; it's a to choose list, and then using these different filters. What's going on in your life right now? What are you prioritizing? What matters? And you know, I'll tell you as an example, as a mom. I've had to shift like crazy. We've had a pandemic and kids have been, you know, uh, schooling from home. And then they were going to school partly, but not. There was oh, so much hard. to to track and to take right. care of. And then also God, their hearts and their minds. This was a rough year for them. Mm-hmm. And the minute that happens, you know, I love what I do. I'm present for my clients, but my kids you know, I'm going to drop everything, right? So the more that I can simplify what I'm doing, have systems that work for me, automate things, keep a a lot of open space, buffer time in between appointments, the easier it is for me to have that flexibility and to be present and to schedule myself in such a way that I can be there for them, especially when they need it. So you see how I'm making choices based on my priorities Mm -hmm. and then adjusting how much I do and when I do it. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. How old are your kids? 
They are. Uh, I have a newly minted teenager, 13 oh, in January, and I have one coming up on 11. Nice. And, Pretty and, uh, sh- Don't tell anyone, but she will be uh, receiving her letter to Hogwarts. So. <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> That's a great. She's going to be so happy. <laughs> I think so. I, I want my letter. I'm wait, I'm still waiting. I'm a little little older than that, but I'm still waiting. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Lisa, this is so great. Now, ha- tell me this. Like sometimes when we have more to do, the more we things that we take on or we have to do, the less we yep. actually get done. Why does this happen? It's almost like, and I don't know if either of you have experienced this, but the more overloaded I am, if something else comes in, it's like my brain slows down. Like it's all, it's almost not functioning yeah. at the level that it needs to anymore. Right? It's, it's like not, Netflix. Yeah. yeah. It's, Netflix it's and like chill. Netflix with a glitch. It's yeah. like sometimes this podcast. Okay. Are you still watching? <laughs> are you, my, 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 my brain is constantly asking me, are you still watching? So... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This, that's a great metaphor. I'm totally going to use oh, this. So good. But it's, you know, it's so true. And, you know, it goes back to that overwhelm that we talked about. You're trying to keep things in your brain. More stuff is coming in. But I think maybe also we could describe this as a stress response because you're already like, I already have a list a mile long of shit I didn't get done I hope I can say that but <laughs> just say it say it, um, it again just did it. <laughs> <laughs> great now you're a bad influence on the podcast Lisa okay just so you know now we have to yeah. put the kid warning the kid sensor on now we do have a kid sensor warning. Exactly. 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 and we're putting it on it's fine yeah. it's good yeah um so it really is though it feels like that though right you're so overwhelmed and that's true when I get overwhelmed then suddenly I'm mean, normally I don't swear but when I get overwhelmed and I I'm just like I've heard it then that comes out and when you're feeling that way I, that's a stress response and there's you you actually your body will slow down there it's Here's a great uh, metaphor. When you have uh, the electric goes out, okay, so your 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 power is gone and you have the generator, and that is not going to cover everything in your house, right? It's only going to cover the bare necessities. And in a stress response, that's that same idea. There's so many things that are going to be shut down, and I think that our productivity, our perceived productivity, our ability to handle. Uh, so much of what's coming at us, especially when it's a barrage, it's absolutely going to be reduced. And that's why I'm such a proponent of how about we simplify like crazy, almost to the point where during a normal scenario, we feel like, wow, there's a lot of space Mm -hmm. here. Are we sure we're good? Because you are creating. She's taking a picture of you. Uh, I was taking a photo of you. Lisa, just see don't be alarmed. Pretend it's Jeez. not happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> Robin likes to make things awkward. You, I just, just I made it, it awkward. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> I, I live for Good. awkward. Uh, my job, it? my job is to make things awkward. Okay, Lisa, that's actually what I do for a job. This is this is my living. Okay. Yeah. Doing, I love that. Doing, or or at the very least, do it like right? it's your job. Absolutely. That's what I say. So yeah, where were we? Um, it, the idea that the the stress response is going to shut down, and so I love the idea of how about we set up. Uh, your life and your systems and your calendar and everything that you're doing in such a way that there's so much openness that you can handle that when something comes in. It's not going to be as much of a stress response because you know what to do with it. And I think, too, that so many times when something comes at us, our first instinct is to be like, okay, I have to do that now. Does that feel accurate? Right. And when you learn the proper systems for you, you can learn how to be like, okay, thank you so much for sending that into my life. Like I needed something else to do. Um, I know exactly what to do with that. And you have a trusted system and a safe place to put it, to set reminders and to decide when it will get done. And I would say that as a tip for those who are inclined to take something in and want to do it right away, inclined to people, please, to say yes, if that's an instinct, which is wonderful, it comes from the best place in your heart. But if you are struggling with that, because every time you do that, it piles more on, it gets overwhelming, try this one tip. When someone asks you for something, say, let me get back oh. to you. Nice. You don't have Mind to say blown, no. Robin. Mind Mic blown. Mic drop. Mic yeah. drop. Right? Yep. 
And it, and it applies in every situation. Just let me get back to you. It gives you a minute to step away, to take a breath, to not have that knee jerk response of, yes, sure, absolutely. I will do it all. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it lets you figure out what you're saying yes to, because when you say yes to something, you are saying no to many other things. Make sure that it's not saying no to you and the things that you need. This is great advice. Right? Is it, I'm taking yeah. notes still. Yeah. Good. Lisa, let me get <laughs> back to you. Um, <laughs> On yes. Yeah. There you go. Okay, sure. Um, so what about I love it. if you are working with somebody who does better when they're super busy and then drops the balls and then sucks when they're like a little bit busy? <laughs> does that make sense? Or are we all confused now? Ah, uh, you know, okay. So there's a bunch of things going on here. How much time? We've got we like have? five hours left. Yeah. Yeah, being being super busy. Yeah, you know about that. <laughs> you want to get back to us, Lisa? Um, you want to get back to us? Take a second yeah. to think about let, it. Let me, let me get back to you. We'll just hang on. We'll just let hang me on. get back to you. <laughs> just, just hang out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold, please. <laughs> and a moment for the break. We'll take a break now. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's a, a few things that, like, if I were coaching someone like this, I would want to find out a bit more of the right. why. What is it about being busy? What's happening there? Now, sometimes don't want to be alarmist, but I need to mm -hmm. put it out there. And I think put it's it important to talk about that. Trying to be ultra productive yeah. can indicate, um, <sighs> It can, it can be indicative of trauma. It can be indicative of uh, outward, like, how do I say this? When you have like outward pressure um, from those, uh, you know, anyone basically mm -hmm. other than yourself, when you're not going internally to check in and say, do I need to do this? You're having, you know, outside pressure to do things. And my first instinct, especially as a coach and also because I'm naturally a questioner, would be to ask why. Why are you doing this? Why do you need this? Um, do you like to keep busy because uh, in the quiet, uh, your mm. mind goes crazy, you know? And I, I don't yeah. mean that in like a therapeutic no, way. True. I just, you know, mean that. In yeah. a, right. But I mean, it's for sometimes people say, oh, I, I struggle to meditate or to be quiet or to rest because I'm constantly feeling the guilt. I, I want to be doing something. So I think that's important to unpack all of those things. Once you've unpacked those and you've identified what's happening, uh, you can decide what to do from there. I mean, there's so many potential things that could be happening. If it's a matter of saying, I like to be going, I like mm -hmm. to be active, then maybe it's a matter of saying, okay, Maybe we don't have quite so many things on your list that you're trying to do all at once, but we make those things more interesting, more fun, more active for you so that they feed this need. Remember that whatever habit we have is uh, giving us a reward of some kind, even if we consider it a quote, bad habit, it's rewarding right. us in some like way. shopping. So we have to figure out what that reward is. And then maybe we can find a, a healthier no, way, right? Shopping. Well, it's just not funny. That's true. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. It's funny because okay? it's That's, true. Yeah. <laughs> It's, we hey, there's the phrase exactly. retail therapy for a reason, right? And and if you're trying not to have stuff, but yeah. you love retail therapy, then you know some of my favorite ways to have retail therapy without ending up with the items is window shopping, helping other people shop yeah. when they need something, uh, you know, creating a Pinterest board, you know, designing things, uh, figuring out what I want to replace. Right. So I have the something mm, in something. Yeah. Out I tried to do that. Thing, That's hard. Right? You know, so there's lots of ways you can still have that mm -hmm. enjoyment without necessarily Stuff. having the, um, Clutter. Let's say yeah. clutter. Yeah, exactly. Robin would say clutter. I would say clutter. Yeah, Let's that's me. Clutter. You know, not everyone mm -hmm. would, but I would. Okay, that's all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll get back it's to you later Robin about that. Okay, <laughs> so you you guys just hang like on. The fact yeah. there's two computers in here probably only needed to be one, but <laughs> there's a lot. That's all. It's okay. It's some stuff. It's fine. Whatever. Uh, you know who can help you, Lisa? <laughs> hey, do you know someone that can help me, <laughs> Lisa? 
I really? Think, Are there I people that do this? I think it's a thing. coaching session with Lisa. That's what I, I think you need. I mean, so Lisa and I That's were talking awesome. a couple of days ago about, I was just explaining to her the difference between you and I mm-hmm. and our houses and <laughs> <laughs> how we live is different. Right. Like my house is not disgusting. No, like it's not, I don't there's think no it is rats yet. and cockroaches climbing up the walls. And don't say yet, that would just be rude. <laughs> I'll get back to you. <laughs> But our houses are different. Yours is like not cluttered and it's always clean. Mine is not. And that's fine. And so I was telling her about that and she's like, oh, this could be another episode of the podcast. This could be something else that's fun. Yes. <laughs> Analyzing us it. based on our homes. Lisa, can you do this? Yes. That's hilarious. Sure. I feel like she's already <laughs> analyzed both of us. Yes. I feel, well, yeah. I feel like, yeah, but we yeah. could we could actually send you some photos and then you could maybe break it down and tell us more about our personalities yeah. based on our homes. Is and I can you tell you that the photos of my house are actually Robin's yeah. house. Okay. And she can take mine. <laughs> <laughs> That would be super fun. Yeah, I just uh, recently coached a team, uh, two VAs that work together, and they're decidedly different. So I think uh, what I'd be more interested in is having some of these personality Mm -hmm. tests that I have my clients take and having you take them and being like, okay, what's going on here? Uh, And and how you, and there's probably a a significant balance that you have. And so there's something to be said for having having the differences, you know what I mean? And you can frequently find compliments and especially in terms of, you know, what you're trying to produce and what you're trying to create. So, yeah, like, I mean, Chelsea's extremely creative and I think with, with creativity sometimes comes chaos, comes right? Like, that's yeah. Not a mess. It's just <laughs> chaos. Right. So, and, and that you actually create really well in that kind of an environment. Whereas for me, I need order. I need things to be where they are. So I know how to find We've them. We've talked about this where, before. I like order. Oh, it's not that you I live don't. at my house. <laughs> Remember <laughs> that was our first episode. You invited me to live at your house. Oh, with true. somebody else, I think, and teacher. Too. The solution was yeah. right there all along. Right there. Like 11 weeks ago, yeah. she invited me. She to didn't take in. it. Now I'll get back to you on it. Okay. I feel like you would have <laughs> kicked me out instantly once I left dishes on the counter or something. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, Lisa, we can't wait to have you on again here at Don't Mind If We Do, because obviously that's going to be happening. I so thanks so, for yeah. analyzing us in advance. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> don't mind if you do. We don't mind. Okay. We don't mind if you yeah, do at we'll all. we'll get back to you and we don't mind. Okay. Uh, but uh, positivelyproductive.com is where you can find Lisa if you'd like to uh, book a coaching session. And that's also where you'll find her Positively Living podcast. Tell us more about yeah. that, Lisa. What, what kind of topics can yeah, we, we find Yeah, we want to hear podcast? about your podcast. Yeah. We, oh, thank you so much mm-hmm. for asking. We are, I, I'm sorry, I'm distracted by, by my dog. You have. Oh, <laughs> I'm just hi, petting Katie. myself. Do you want to get back to us? <laughs> this is, this is I'd Madeline. like to get now. Oh, hi. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that just makes me so happy. All right. We're, we're we're pausing for a pet break. Okay, and we're back. You pause. So, and we're back. This episode is sponsored by Madeline, the dog. That's right. It was yeah. pausing, P A W. That's yeah, a dad exactly. joke. That was a dad it was joke. so a dad joke. Yeah, yeah I love the dad joke. <laughs> okay, so the okay, Positively focus. Living podcast. <laughs> um, it's uh, so much of the stuff we have been talking about already today. And, you know, it's this idea that we really need to dig deep and create a proper foundation for productivity, that we need to redefine productivity and stop thinking about it as doing more and being busy, but rather doing less and living more. Mm -hmm. And the topics really touch upon all of these things. So there's a set of foundational topics. There is a wonderful episode. It's my number one downloaded episode. uh, And it's on trauma informed life and understanding this idea. Trauma sounds so scary. It's not. It's what we go through as humans and understanding that better, understanding ourselves, number one productivity tool. So things like that, authenticity, change, fear, you name it. Lots of episodes on that. There's lots of episodes on organizing, meal planning, capsule wardrobes, you know, all kinds of interesting things for your day to day, case studies, business coaches to help you run your business better, especially if you're (laughs) multi-passionate. And I've also just recently added coaching. So I can do a 30 minute productivity boost with someone on air. And that has been, um, Oh, you're coaching on your podcast. I'm coaching on the podcast. That's awesome. That would be perfect for someone on that's on this (laughs) podcast. Stop looking at me. (laughs) I don't know. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you if I want to be coached on the podcast. Don't mind if you do, okay? (laughs) 
<laughs> That's oh your favorite goodness. one from today. Yeah. So yeah, and yeah. it's just all kinds of uh, episodes that relate to that, to to us as humans trying to balance it all and realizing that it's more about finding harmony in it. Fun. How long have you had your podcast? It's been a little over a year and I nice. am loving every minute of it. I just published awesome. my 60th episode as of this recording today Woo-hoo. and Fun. it is in the top 5% of Listen Notes podcasts worldwide. So. Wonderful. Amazing. Yeah. So everyone who's listening today, go check it out for sure. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Lisa, Let's... thank you so much for joining us. Again, Lisa Zorotny. I'm saying that correct, right, Lisa? I checked you before. You are. Am I still saying it right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Neil, You're so good. Let me get back to you. So good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm okay. <laughs> Lisa, thanks so much for being here. We really uh, appreciate it. We're going to you. check out your podcast for sure, and uh, and definitely do get back to us and let us know uh, oh, when sure. we can uh, when we can join you again. Because when be Robin fun. can get coached on your podcast, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh my gosh, this yeah. is such such a pleasure. Keep doing what you're doing. I love it. We are all complete women. Just a shout out to your episode. I loved that. Oh uh, yay! And <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, this is good. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much for, for letting me Next join. Next time we see you might be in person because I love New York. You, it's uh, my favorite, favorite place. So, wine, wine country. Come on. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. So I'll look you up next time. Next time I'm Sounds there. Good. When she comes for a coaching session. Yeah, for my coach. It'll be in person. <laughs> that's, I can do I that. Like that. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. You're okay, the best. Thank you. Have a great day. We'll talk thank to you, you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Don't Mind If We Do is brought to you by Vintage Chic Portrait, helping everyday women feel beautiful in their own skin. Thanks for listening to Don't Mind If We Do. If you loved it, please share this episode with a friend and follow us and check us out on Facebook and we'll follow you back. As long as you don't mind if we do. You probably won't mind. You'll probably like it. <laughs> <laughs>